is here wrestling observer live mike semper vv also wrestling observer.com very happy today to be joined by fred rosser got a lot to talk about here fred how you doing today i'm doing well thank you for having me on the show i always say don't uh, don't die with the story and you tell it that's right i was watching new japan strong and every Friday I watch it, and then when it's over, I make a request for somebody to come on the show here on Wednesday. And I'm watching this show, and Fred Rosser debuts. I thought, wow, look at that. I haven't seen him in years. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, WWE forever, and name just kind of disappeared for a while. And then here you are on New Japan Strong. And they ring the bell, and like before the match was even over... I had I had contacted New Japan. I was like, I've got to get Fred Rosser on the show. Can you get him on the show? I was so impressed with you in that match. I thought you were great, especially having not seen you for so long. So I guess the question is, how many matches? Like, what have you been doing since you left WWE? Well, since I left WWE in 2017, I've done some of my best work on the independents. But on top of the wrestling, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I have a block the hate movement that's been running wild all over the world, including New Japan Pro Wrestling. So on top of the wrestling, I speak to kids all over the world about the effects of bullying and how we can, uh, uh, you know, block the hate pretty much, you know. So uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling has always been a bucket list of mine to join and it was Lance Hort, who I ran into uh, in September 2019 at a show in Pomona, California. And I told him that I had strong interest in uh, doing New Japan. So I went to a show at the Globe Theater in L.A. in November, and I watched a New Japan show for the first time in the crowd from beginning to end. And that question was running in my head, do I fit in here? Do I fit in here? And at the end of the show, I definitely said to myself, I belong in New Japan, and I definitely fit in. You know, I, I knew you had been doing some of the, the anti-bullying stuff, but in terms of, of wrestling, I, I saw a few shows here and there. How often were you wrestling during that period? Was it a weekly thing, once a month, a couple times a month? I would say uh, a handful of times a year. i I've had matches, uh, quality matches with Fala Ba from Impact, Sean Spears from AEW, uh, Jake Atlas, who got signed with uh, yep. NXT earlier in the year. So I try to focus more on quality than quantity, you know, because September 11th will be 18 years that I've been putting into the business. So I don't want to uh, just put myself out there for – uh, no offense, n- non-quality uh, organizations. I want to focus on the quality organizations. And my body is what makes me money. So uh, I want to be able to just focus on the ones that really matter. And New Japan Pro Wrestling really matters to me. You know, there's a style of work that we see in WWE. It's a very specific WWE style. And the former Zack Ryder went to AEW. And when you watch his matches, I mean, he still does that same style in the ring. And so when I saw you walk into the ring, I was basically wondering, like, what are we going to get here? And in my opinion, like, you worked a totally non-WWE style. You worked a New Japan match on this show. And was that... Is is that how you learned to work originally before you went to WWE? Did you did you start doing that on the indie scene? Was that an easy transition after so many years in WWE? Or what are your thoughts on that? I mean, right now, as we speak, I'm getting goosebumps as you explaining uh, what you've seen out of me. You know, um, you know, WWE is WWE. Uh, when I first started wrestling in 2002, and I was trained in that 80s style, which was great. After a while, in you know, 2003, 2004, I ventured off to another wrestling school in New Jersey to work with guys that had experience in, in New Japan or that Japanese style. So um, from then on, I was able to adjust and do a WWE style. If I needed to do a New Japan type style match uh, early in my career, which was rare, uh, I could do it. But when I got the opportunity, thank goodness for Rocky Romero during this whole pandemic about this opportunity, uh, 
I have to clear it with my family first. You know, my family blessed me to take on this opportunity, a bucket list opportunity of mine. And I did a lot of studying, you know. I watched, uh, again, I, 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 I reintroduced myself to the style by just studying all Japan wrestling, New Japan wrestling, just, just that style uh, of registering and hitting hard in safe places, not hurting anyone, not killing anyone. And uh, Kevin Kelly said it best when I did my first Zoom, talking about my first time experience with New Japan. He said that guys can't plan for me. Uh, if you're going to be flying in the air, I'm going to swat you down like a fly. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy that uh, you think that I adjusted well to the style. Now, did you have guys that you had appreciated during your career and during your come up that you wanted to go back and watch? Or was it just kind of introducing yourself to the whole style uh, when it comes to All Japan and New Japan? And who are some of the people that you watched that that influenced you the most? Uh, I've always been a fan of like someone like Muda. Uh, the way he moves, not what he does in the ring, but the in-between stuff, the way he moves, uh, the way he sells, the way he explodes, the way he accelerates. You know, I'm a huge fan of uh, guys like Kanahashi, Abushi, uh, uh, you know, guys that know how to, like, uh, you know, make it look as real as possible. And and believability is so important to me. And, uh, you know, those are the guys that I liked watching. Who did you like watching when you were growing up? Because I guess you, you started out as a fan kind of in the early to mid-90s. Is that right? Who are, who are some of the guys that really impressed you? Well, as a kid, I enjoyed watching, of course, Shawn Michaels. But, you know, some of the guys, the mid-card guys, like Bobby Eaton in WCW, uh, Brad Armstrong in WCW, these guys were mid-card guys, but um, the in-between stuff, they really, they really emphasized it, you know, the selling, the, the delivery of strikes and punches, um, those those are some of the guys that I really, really enjoyed watching. Jake the Snake Roberts, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Um, you know, those guys had me believe. I didn't know why I enjoyed watching them, but I just knew that they they had me hooked as a fan. Uh, and I can't and I can't forget Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas was great on the mic, uh, but when he would sell, when he would be in pain, uh, I, I was on the edge of my seat. I was rooting rooting for the underdog. So I know that you did football growing up. Did you do any amateur wrestling? I did amateur wrestling. I did football uh, in amateur wrestling. I did amateur wrestling to kind of lose weight because I was a pretty heavy wrestler. Football season, I'd be like 280. And with the wrestling season, I'd be down to about 250. But the only reason I did it was because it was the closest thing to wrestling. Uh, I remember when I would do amateur wrestling, I would tape up my knees like Triple H. I would tape up my elbows to, to you know, get that sympathy from the, uh, from the crowd that would watch me do amateur wrestling. Uh, but if I didn't pin you in the first round, uh, I was probably going to lose because I was a heavy kid. I didn't have any win. But as I got older and I made the move to professional wrestling, I got better working with guys that had an amateur background. Yeah, because there was some there was some kind of grappling at the beginning of the match on that I saw on Friday, and I was like, this guy looks like he can grapple. Like he looks like he's got oh. experience doing this. Oh, well, that's just the beginning. That's my bread and butter. We're kind of losing you here, so if you're if you're moving around, kind of find a, a spot there. Okay, can, can you hear me better? There we go, right there. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, at amateur wrestling, I know how to adjust. I know how to flow, and um, that's. Uh oh. In the air, you're not going to see me flying in the air. You're going to see me just. Uh, coming in, you straight forward. So, has New Japan contacted you about any future dates that you can talk about? I mean, is this more than a one-off? Well, 
know, honestly, I want 2020 to end, and I want 2021 to kind of begin. Uh, my goal is uh, compete in Japan, you know. I'm doing the American shows. I'm so blessed and so happy to have the opportunity to do so. But my ultimate goal is to go out to Japan and wow the crowd out there. And so far, the response since my debut with New Japan uh, has been great. A lot of the Japanese fans Great, you know. So once I was able to watch my debut to it, I, I was just saying to myself, oh, the people aren't going to buy into me. The people aren't, aren't going to like me. But the response all in all has been phenomenal. Well, I want to get some some opportunity to get some plugs in here for some of the other stuff that we're doing. We're having a rough phone connection here, so I want to make sure that we can get out some some social media information. And obviously, you guys can check out njpwworld.com. The show from Friday is up there. But uh, let's get some some stuff out there about what else you're doing. Yeah, you know, right before the pandemic, I did my first ever musical in New York for about a month, where I was singing, dancing, and acting. So that was an opportunity that, you know, I couldn't pass. And it was actually Chris Jericho that kind of, uh, not personally, but he encouraged me to use his experience on Dancing with the Stars, you know. And I'm 30, 26, I probably had, but at 36, I oh, you know, give it a shot. And give it a shot so I can honestly say that I'm like the first, uh, a WWE superstar to actually do an off-Broadway musical. So, uh, you know, on top of that, I've been quite blessed collaborating with companies on social media like Celsius Official Energy Drink, a ton of snack companies. So I always have to knock on some wood. 2020 so far has been great to me personally. And on top of that, I've been offering a lot of personal training services to my friends and my uh, fans all over the world during this whole pandemic, how to train outdoors, how to eat properly during this pandemic. So that's my way of giving back to the community. Well, you guys can check out Real Fred Rosser on Twitter for more. And Fred, I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. It was great. And best of luck with everything and good luck with New Japan. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. As noted, check out at Real Fred Rosser. Sorry about the uh, issues with the phone right there, but things happen. We'll be back in a moment with much more Wrestling Observer Live.